Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're going to revisit Tower X40 VRM thermal testing, but this time with the beastly Threadripper 3990X, the 64 core 128 thread processor. And this will be sort of a follow up video to what we published back in December of last year, where we compared eight extreme motherboards designed to support these new third gen Threadripper processors. And basically, the idea back then was to see how well these motherboards handled the 32 core 3970X. And we found even with that processor overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz using 1.3 volts, all boards ran very cool for what was an effortless pass. When installed inside a large ATX case with reasonably low airflow and a 21 degree ambient temperature, the worst board saw its VRM peak at just 60 degrees, while the best, MSI's creator, peaked at just 49 degrees. Then coming in second was ASUS with their ROG Zenith 2 Extreme running just 2 degrees hotter than MSI, followed by Gigabyte's Aorus Extreme running just a degree hotter again. Despite coming in second by what really is a negligible margin, and I will again emphasize that we're not looking for the outright winner, whether the board peaks at 49 degrees or 51 degrees, it really doesn't matter, both are very satisfactory results. But despite that, Asus did fall short by a few degrees, and apparently that just didn't sit well with them. So they went back and made a few quick upgrades. Those quick upgrades saw the previously used Infineon 70 amp power stages swapped out for Infineon's 90 amp power stages. So that seems like a pretty solid plan to create the ultimate Threadripper power delivery system. Everything else remains the same, even the PWM controller, and of course the VRM configuration itself. So Whereas previously the vCore portion of the VRM looked like this, it now looks like this. And ASUS hopes that that will mean they now offer the coolest running TRX40 motherboard, especially now that we'll be dumping our 3970 results in favour of a complete top-down retest with the 64-core 3990X. So rather than spend any more time looking over a motherboard that we've essentially already seen, let's talk about the test configuration and then jump into the results. In order to apply load to the system, I'm using a real-world blender workload, which runs for an hour, after which point I record the peak VRM temperature. The CPU of choice is naturally the Threadripper 3990X, and for testing we have two configurations, a completely stock configuration with nothing but XMP loaded, and then we have an OC configuration which sees the 3990X overclocked to 3.8 GHz using 1.3 volt. I could have run at 4 GHz, but it doesn't really change much, so to ensure stability across all the boards, I opted for 3.8 GHz. For those wondering, the typical power draw from the wall was around 450 watts when stock, while the overclock configuration was sucking down around 850 watts. All testing takes place in a 21 degree room inside the Cooler Master Newark 90SE case. And the reason I went with this case was simple. It was the only one I had available to use that could house the Aorus Extreme, and it only just squeezes in there. The fan configuration in this case is a little unusual as the front mounted fans aren't actually front mounted, but rather side mounted. So in the front slash side, we have three 140 millimeter fans, and in the rear, a single 140 millimeter exhaust fan. This is a fairly typical fan setup for a full tower case, though I'm still gonna call it low airflow for the VRM as we don't have a fan directly pumping air over the VRM heat sinks. Also, please note the fan's orientation isn't the same as what's shown in the B-roll. I've since set the front fans as intake and the rear as exhaust. To record the temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples. And for this test, I'm measuring the PCB temperature behind the power stages and reporting the highest temperature from all eight probes. Here's how the Alpha and a few other high-end TRX40 motherboards handle the stock 3990X. Pretty easily done, really. The Alpha is very impressive, peaking at just 50 degrees, and that meant it was 5 degrees cooler than the previous champ, the MSI Creator. And in this test, it was also 5 degrees cooler than the original Zenith 2 Extreme. So an impressive result, but if you're not just after the best VRM performance, there are plenty of other capable boards worth considering. Okay, so time for the overclocking results, and please note, for the ASUS boards, I changed the voltage monitor setting in the BIOS from DieSense to SocketSense. ASUS now uses the DieSense method instead of SocketSense for increased accuracy, as readouts using SocketSense are generally higher, according to ASUS. However, SocketSense is what everyone else uses, so for an apples-to-apples -apples comparison when manually setting voltages, SocketSense was used. 
Now, with the 3990X system sucking around 850 watts from the wall, things started to get hot, and in one instance, even throttle. Let's start with the Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha. What a beast this thing is. Despite the truly massive load, the board peaked just 82 degrees, and that's an 8 degree reduction from the original Zenith 2 Extreme. Interestingly, with this huge load, ASUS would have won anyway, albeit by just 2 degrees. The passively cooled MSI crater is still very impressive though, and with minimal airflow still kept temperatures under 100 degrees. The Aorus Extreme also did well, though I was surprised to find it running 6 degrees hotter than the original Zenith board, but again both did very well and certainly passed this test, so I wouldn't say the Zenith is a must-have based on these results. Even the Aorus Master passed despite being a little toasty at 103 degrees, you'd certainly want to improve the airflow for this board, and I wouldn't recommend it for hotter environments if you're a madman and plan on overclocking the snot out of a 3990X. Also, if you are a bit of a madman, you'll want to avoid the ASRock Tai Chi. It did a great job with the 3990X stock, but overclocked, the power draw was simply too much and it threw in the towel, periodically throttling the CPU down to 500MHz for a breather before cranking it back up for a few seconds and then repeating the process over and over again, keeping the hot spot at 97 degrees. Out of interest, I dropped the load line calibration of the Tai Chi down to level 3, and this dropped the V core to just 1.1 volts and the draw from the wall down to 700 watts, and here the Tai Chi managed to avoid throttling. It still peaked at 92 degrees, but the system was stable. Though pushing the voltage just a little bit up to 1.15 volts did introduce throttling again. So the Tai Chi is right on the edge here. It's basically maxed out. But it does go to show with a little bit of voltage tweaking, the overclock can be optimized quite a bit, though you won't get 4 gigahertz with these settings. So the new ASUS ROG Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha, very short, easy to remember name there, but it is a seriously high-end TRX40 motherboard, and it's certainly the most impressive board in terms of VRM thermal performance, which should mean that it's the best option for extreme 3990X overclocking. How many of you are interested in Threadripper overclocking, especially for the 64 core part, is well, it's hard to say, but I guess I'd say we could count the number of viewers interested on one hand. Initially, it sounds like ASUS had planned to replace the original Zenith 2 Extreme with the upgraded Alpha model, but due to the uncertainty caused by the spread of COVID-19, the transition will take longer than expected due to the Alpha being in short supply. So for now, both models will coexist, but if you want the Alpha, make sure that's the version you're actually buying. In terms of price, there appears to be very little in it, and at best estimate, the Alpha looks to cost no more than $50 more. Right now, it is listed on Newegg.com for $850, though it is also currently out of stock, whereas the original model is also selling for $850, and it is in stock. So I imagine the plan initially was to phase out the Zenith 2 Extreme and bring in the Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha at basically the same price. Obviously, $850 US is a heck of a lot of money for a motherboard, but TRX40 motherboards are generally quite expensive, though admittedly, they're not generally that expensive. Still, if you're spending $4,000 US on a CPU, then $850 on the motherboard shouldn't be too much of a problem, especially if you're after the best of the best. Boards such as the ASRock Tai Chi are much cheaper at around $500, but as you just saw, when it comes to extreme 3990X performance, they aren't nearly as capable as the Alpha. So I feel like MSI's TRX40 crater is still a gem at $700 and passes our test with relative ease. Again, the Alpha is almost certainly better for extreme overclocking, but also again, I doubt many of you in our audience are all that interested in extreme workstation overclocking. The two don't really go hand in hand, given that reliability is paramount for workstation applications. For me, I'd be picking between the Zenith 2 Extreme Alpha, MSI Crater, and the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme, based on the features they offer and which one will suit my needs best. And that is going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, there's the, the YouTube stuff uh, that you can do. You can also subscribe for more of this if you've just happened to stumble across our channel. We do tend to do a bit of this testing uh, from time to time, and it's mostly thanks to our Patreon members because, generally speaking, this kind of content doesn't get a lot of views. Our last TRX40 our VRM test from December last year has very few views, so there wasn't really 
much sense doing a follow-up if we were after views. But as I said, a lot of you guys enjoy this, our core audience, and it is supported by our Patreon members. So big thank you to them. And if you would like to become a Patreon member, a member of the Harbour Box community, then you can follow the link in the video description. You get access to our monthly live stream where you can, well, if you happen to tune in live, you can ask questions uh, to Tim and myself. You can also do so on our private Patreon exclusive Discord server. That's a really good place to be if you're a PC enthusiast. And we also have behind the scenes content. So you can, we cover all kinds of weird and wonderful things there. But above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.